A report released today by associations representing nursing and assisted living homes has some startling numbers. Now, since the pandemic began, these homes have seen a loss of 220,000 jobs, about 14% of their employees. A UMD professors work with robots that can augment care will soon help fill that gap thanks to a recent agreement with a nursing home company. And so joining us now is Arshia Khan, a professor of computer science at UMD. Arshia, thank you so very much for being with us tonight. This is a fascinating subject. You're all very much into the world of robotics. How big is the world of robotics? And is it continuing to spread at a, at a pretty fast clip? It, it is growing pretty fast. It is growing especially because of the pandemic, you know. People are realizing how useful the robots can be when human beings aren't able to do certain things, go certain places, then the robots can do their job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the work that you're doing is um, trying to figure out ways that robots can interact with and help patients with dementia or people right. with dementia. Exactly. Give some examples of the kinds of things that maybe robots could do that people might not think about. Yeah, um, when we talk about robots assisting the elderly, we are talking about augmenting care, not replacing care. And so how can we augment care? They can take up jobs that uh, the human beings find them boring, for instance, things that are repetitive. Like for instance, if they are sitting and having a conversation with somebody with dementia, you know, the repetition can get annoying after a while, so repeating the same thing, human beings' tone would change, but the robot's tone would never change. The robot's interaction with the human would still always be the same no matter what, how many times the robot repeats something. So for instance, my robots offer reminiscence therapy. So when they are offering this therapy, they, they are basically talking about the past and sharing things from their past and discussing, bringing up things that happened in the past. So if they are repeating that multiple times, their tone is never going to change. They can continuously keep reminding and talking and interacting with the human, mm -hmm. whereas the human beings can get tired of it. And then, you know, that human being can be free to do something more important for the person with dementia. Professor, mm -hmm. do some people fear robots? Absolutely. that they may take over life over a period of years? Absolutely, absolutely. All the science fiction scares the people, unfortunately. And so uh, one thing that people need to realize is robots won't do anything we don't tell them to do it. So essentially we are programming them to do whatever we want them to do. So they will never take over the world, at least not mm -hmm. for another couple of centuries. You know, We are no, not there yet. Not in as we see in the movies. No. Definitely not. And we have some video up of the robots that you're working with. Talk a little bit about that robot in particular. Yeah, so this robot was built in Japan and it's uh, shipped to the US and we purchase it from, manu from a company that's basically you know, selling it to us. And we program them to do things for the elderly. So like the robots tell jokes, for instance, have <laughs> s small conversations, you know. Um, so it's sort of engaging the person, trying to improve their social life. Mm -hmm. Eventually, do you think some people will be able to buy robots, either for companionship or to help work around the house? Absolutely. We will see that day, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but one thing is very clear that they are not going to hurt people unless, you know, it falls or something like that. But it only can do what we program it to do. It cannot do anything beyond that. It doesn't have a mind of its own, you know. Mm -hmm. It sounds like uh, what you're working toward with some of these patients is a very emotional connection yes. with, with the robot. Exactly. And you work with these robots every day. Do you have an emotional connection to them? I do, uh -huh. I do, especially my robots because we, they do facial recognition and we ran those facial recognition algorithms on them so they recognize me because so you the come students, in in the morning and they say hi <laughs> they, they do recognize me and as soon as they hear my voice in the background you know we we can monitor their log uh -huh. and you can see that you know they say they say my name and you can see whatever i'm saying they are listening to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is there so, some trial and error when you're programming robots absolutely absolutely and and you know they are not perfect the technology still needs a lot of work so they are, they are like, you know, when we are having a conversation with them, especially when they are wearing a mask, 
the sound is muffled, so they don't hear so clearly, you know, oh. they misinterpret. But uh, th they are very good at having conversations, whatever we program them to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Apply natural language processing algorithms to them, and they do, they do a good job. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it sounds like after the first of the year, they're going to actually be out in the real world uh, in some, some nursing facilities. Yes, yes. Coming January 1st, we are going to start deploying robots, two robots at each facility at eight of Monarch's facilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've said that robots can actually advance humanity. How can they do that? Because they're able to assist us. They're able to relieve us of the mundane tasks. So we can tend to more intellectual tasks. Mm -hmm. What are your students, how do they feel about this? Because it looks like they're really hands-on in this project too, interacting. Are they helping with the programming too? Yes, they are. They are. They love it. They fall in love with the robots just like I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they enjoy working with the robots. And you know, we sort of develop personalities, attach personalities to these robots. So we build a connection with the robots. We have names for all the robots. I was just going to ask you about personality. <laughs> you have seven robots. Do they all, all seven have different personalities? We, we attribute personalities to them. They are all the same, but you know, yes. we, we, we you do give that. them their personality. We give them the personalities, <laughs> yes, yeah. And you mentioned, we were talking a little bit before the show, that you're really trying to engage young women yes. in, in robotics with your program. Exactly, exactly. The team that is going to be working on this is majority women. So we are bringing in five female students just to help with this task, in addition to the students that I already have. Mm -hmm. Well, so. well, I wish we had more time. We don't, and I really appreciate uh, the fact you're here tonight. Fascinating subject. All the best. Thank you. All right. I appreciate Arshia you inviting Khan, me. Professor at UMD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.